Hey guys, uh, I know I'm back. It's been a while. It's always been a while. I say that every time. I do. I really do. But uh, it's been a while. I just got back from celebration. Um, I'm going to do a celebration haul video because there's just, like just too much to put in pictures really uh, on Instagram and all that. I mean, I can, but it's just, it's a ton. Uh, but I wanted to do a video as well, just kind of showcasing what I got. Um, so yeah, I guess I'll go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'll, I'll do is like a overview right now. So there's a lot of stuff, like a lot of stuff. I got a lot, a lot, and I mean a lot. So first we'll start over here. Um, the Power of the Force 2 Boba Fett. I got him, no big deal. He's going to be part of a custom I'm going to be doing of a more movie-accurate Boba Fett. Um, that will come later, probably on my Instagram, but yeah, um, that's part of a custom I'm going to be working on. Um, here is a Darth Vader, or not Darth Vader, an Imperial uh, Shaker. Um, I had to do that while I was gone because my other Shaker is broke. So I needed a good one, so I figured I would buy one while I was out at Celebration in Chicago. So, uh, I've also got Tannis Spijek, Spijek, um, he as well as uh, Jay Queel, uh, he's also in the same run, uh, are harder to get uh, because of the nature of what happened as far as the barge. He's part of the barge, um, he's part of the goon squad on the barge, so uh, now that everybody's got barges, they want the figures to go on it, so Jay Queel and this one are becoming harder to get so I got him at a decent price I'm still after Jay Quill I'm um, probably gonna open him up too because I'm working on as many as, as, uh, as some as you some of you know the reason why I got this as well the the Jabba's Palace Court Denizens which is also climbing in price some people were trying to ask a hundred bucks for it I got mine for 45 at celebration um, but yeah, I'm I'm working on a Jabba's Palace diorama. So uh, as far as like figures go, I went kind of Return of the Jedi heavy this time, because um, again I'm working on that diorama and I want to get it done with as uh, best figures as possible there in the most in their most like movie accurate portrayal. So yeah, um, that's gonna go. These guys are gonna go in the uh, Jabba's Palace dio that I'm working on. Uh, I got uh, another loose sand trooper for figure photography. Um, I love the sand troopers from the Black Series line. Um, I really wanted to get more, but uh, I've got two right now. They're okay, but I really want the Dewback set. But those, that Dewback set is just so much money. A lot of people are asking too much for it, so I'll get it later at a probably a decent price. I also got the Tours R Us exclusive uh, First Order Officer and. Akbar uh, set got it for twenty bucks. Good deal. I just was like, hey, why not? Kind of wanted it. Uh, I didn't get a chance to like scoop one up before our Toys R Us closed, so I went ahead and got one uh, while I was there. Twenty bucks. Um, this is going to be part of the Jabba's Palace die that I'm working on as well. That's Han Solo. I'm going to actually use his head sculpt for the current Jabba's Palace Han Solo because it looks. I mean, it looks a lot like Harrison Ford, like, especially with the eyebrows, like, coming out of his, uh, hibernation sickness. Like, that's pretty much the exact face that he makes. He's almost, like, sad and confused, but, um, and I also I got it for the carbonite block. Um, you know, I can mount that on the wall, like, when he finally falls out. So, I got it for, like, three bucks, so I was like, heck yeah. And here are a couple of loose figures that I got that I've been wanting for a long time. The, uh, Delilah, Delilah, Delilah Blue. Um, part of the comic pack that was with, uh, I believe it was Nile, Darth Nile, or N I'm sorry, Nihilus. Um, uh, yeah, so I'd been wanting her for a long time, got her. And then I got Lats Ward, a really cool bounty hunter. I saw a Dread Priest out there too, the guy in the red, but, uh, the lady wanted 60 bucks for him loose, so I was like, eh, I'll pass. And I, I've, for all these, I've paid a pretty reasonable price too. Um, I have Coffee Arana and Ram Coda. I've had these in the past, but uh, my customizing days, and I'm still customizing, but uh, if I would have known back in my customizing days, like when I was heavy into it, uh, that these figures uh, were going to be ones that I wanted to keep, I wouldn't have butchered them. So yeah, I got these two again. 
a couple of Army Builder uh, Geonosis droids. I always want to build these up because one day I plan to make a, a Battle of Geonosis diorama with the Jedi in it, Battle Arena, which would be really cool. Um, I also got this Saga Luke uh, to get for the uh, Return of the Jedi indoor robes and belt and the helmet uh, to put on the Vintage Collection uh, Luke Skywalker. And I got this one loose as well as, as, well as these other two uh, at the show for a pretty good price. But I got the, uh, of course, the Leia uh, indoor uh, gear loose. And, uh, but I got these loose because Return of the Jedi is one of my favorite Star Wars films, and I'm going to work on some dioramas for that, like as far as the whole movie is concerned. Um, here are the two sabers for the saga and the vintage collection, but yeah, I wanted to get it for the, uh, for the figure and the, and the accessories. So, uh, also, if I would have known that I would have bought one of these <laughs> while I was there, I would have kind of maybe have held off, but I think I'm okay. But, uh, I'll go into this later. But um, these two Ewoks are awesome. I'm going to try to start building my Ewok collection as well because what I just mentioned. Um, I actually got these from uh, the Foosh, his booth. Um, his booth, the guys at his booth were selling these. So I picked them up from him. And uh, Brian, he's an awesome guy, the Foosh, a super nice guy. Me and him uh, talked for a while at Celebration. We talked for quite a while just about toys. <laughs> That's pretty much it, collecting. And... Uh, so yeah, I got these from him at, at that booth, and I had been wanting this Legacy Art Trooper for a long time. I think this came in like a three-pack uh, from Walmart, um, but I really wanted them. I love this trooper. I love the colors, just the white and red with the red kama, comma, whatever you call it. Uh, love it. And of course, when the trailer dropped, I had to get this guy at $6 loose. Five, I'm sorry, $5 loose. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, as soon as the trailer dropped, people started buying Emperor Palpatine slash just Emperor stuff all over uh because of the nature of the of the the trailer people were so hyped uh to hear him return so i mean understandably so and i got quite a bit of vintage collection figures these the vader and luke uh as well as the uh han solo and princess leia are the face the first some of the first face scan photo reel face scan figures. Uh, these are the re-release from the original Vintage Collection line um, because Hasbro re-released these four um, specifically um, because they were hard to get in Europe for whatever reason. Not sure why, but they re-released them and they wanted to release these to the European market to give those guys another chance to collect these. But they had them at Celebration at the Hasbro store. Uh, and these were available to general public. Uh, the six inch exclusives uh, were not. I didn't get a chance to get them while I was there, but my buddy Tim, he texted me today, and when they released it to the general public, I wasn't there on that. It was on a Sunday. Um, I wasn't there, but he so graciously stood in line for me and got them for me. And I didn't even like I didn't even ask him to do that. He did that himself, and uh, I was gonna send them to me. And like Tim, if you're watching, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I really wanted those exclusives really bad. And uh, he got them for me, so I, I can't thank you enough. So, again, a couple of uh, uh, Return of the Jedi. Uh, the the Klaatu I had to really get because excellent looking figure, brand new. I'm going to open them up. Uh, I really do uh, want to because I have the Power of the Force 2 skiff, and I'm going to get the new skiff. I don't have the barge. The barge is just like so much money. Like, I really want it. But $500, I almost can't justify that on one purchase. Um, not right now, at least. <laughs> so, uh, but I got uh, Rebel Soldier. Um, he's going to go in a diorama soon, hopefully. Uh, of course, the Han Solo I showed you. And then the Selt Murray, Selt Murray, or Yak Face. Had to get him. Super awesome looking figure. I mean, great detail. Awesome. The cloth goods. The uh, detail on the skin looks awesome. Um, and then, uh, part of my, my haul is the t-shirts, of course, Star Wars Celebration Chicago. Love this, uh, love this shirt because of Luke. Like, Return of the Jedi Luke is my favorite version of Luke. Um, just such a cool outfit and awesome green saber. I love it. It's like my favorite version of Luke. Uh, I had to get the Boon to Eve classic shirt. That's awesome. Of, co of course, because I got into the Star Wars franchise because of the prequels. Uh, I was five years old at the time when The Phantom Menace came out. Watched that movie uh, in my whitey tighties as a five-year-old kid, star-stricken, and 
you know, from then on, I've just watched all the movies um, and gotten into Star Wars. As you can see, it's just kind of snowballed. Uh, and then also Darth Maul. This was actually, it says Star Wars Celebration Chicago. This is actually the first time they've done this. Um, this was a little section where you can go and pick uh, a certain color out and pick a design. They had a different designs and just different t-shirt colors. And uh, this is the color and the design I picked out and they printed it on the shirt and it's awesome. It's one of my favorite shirts I own now. Uh, I love it. Um, and then in the Celebration store where you got these three shirts because they had Celebration exclusive merchandise like shirts, pins, hats, jackets, kind of mugs, stuff like that. Because um, all the rest of this came from the show floor, the merchandise floor, like where regular merchandise or regular uh, vendors sold stuff. So, um, but if you bought over $150 worth of stuff, then you were in the running to get this Boba Fett exclusive celebration pin, which I scooped it up because there was only a few left of those. He's already going for like 40 bucks on eBay right now, which is ridiculous, but I had to get them. And also I picked up this 20th anniversary Phantom Menace uh, patch <clears throat> from the celebration store. I love it. Um, episode one got me into Star Wars and it's one of my favorite Star Wars films. Yes, I know it's very campy and a lot of people hate that film but I like it because it got me into Star Wars as a whole so that film is very near and dear to me so also I got the Legacy Collection uh, uh, Arena Geonosis Arena Shock T and the uh, Geonosis uh, Warrior that came with it um, I didn't pay that much for it I paid 25 I talked them down just a little uh, the reason why this set is uh, sought after for me is because this is the best version of Shock T she has the ball jointed elbows the other like return the I mean I'm sorry revenge of the Sith sculpt of this she has uh, swivel elbows which is why this figure this particular shock T goes for a lot of money uh, she's just about thirty dollars loose by herself on eBay so I you know at this price talked them down 25 I had to get it uh, she like I said goes for about 30 bucks loose alone for this particular version of shock T because of the ball jointed elbows so this is the best rendition of shock T that we have right now which is you know why she's sought after in this pack um, got the 40th Chewbacca and 40th Luke because these are my last two to complete my entire 40th anniversary collection including the celebration exclusive that was the 2017 one the X-Wing pilot Luke uh, I was there to get that which was awesome uh, that was in, I think I may have that in my last video uh, and then also from GTP Toys, the the um, uh, crates, the Imperial crates, uh, cargo crates. Um, these are like 3D printed slash these. Well, actually, they're they made out of like silicone, but they're really really cool. I got to meet the owner of GTP Toys. Uh, one of the owners. It's two brothers, Mike and John, nothing or John. Um, but I, I met John. Mike was busy. John's super cool guy. He gave me these for free, like, because he knew some of the fans were going to be there of their business. Because what they do is they, uh, I think it originally started as like a fan project. They started 3D printing stuff, like modeling. Uh, and they are the guys that created the Death Star walls uh, for dioramas for figures, like 6 inch scale and 3.75 inch. These are 6 inch scale, of course. They're kind of big. But uh, he gave these to me uh, as part of like a gift, and I just wanted to meet him because actually uh, uh, Brian, uh, the foosh, told me that he was there, and uh, I, I didn't know. So he was like, man, yeah, go meet him while he's here. So I had made it a point to go meet him, and he straight up gave me these, which is super nice of him. Uh, I really appreciated that. So super nice guy. I'm glad I met him. Thank you, Brian, for recommending me go, meet, go meeting him too. Uh, it was a fun time. I got to, got to know him. Uh, from one fan to another. So, uh, got my Black Series Star Killer signed by Sam Witwer. Sam Witwer can't even speak. Um, and I got it authenticated. Uh, it's got a little sticker they put for like a, a seal of authentication. And uh, it was really, really cool to speak, because I, I got to speak to him. Really cool to speak to him. Down to earth guy. Like, he made it a point to actually talk to you <laughs> as a fan. Um, because I know how the fans can be kind of weird, kind of strange, and wanting to say weird stuff. But no, he, he was a really cool guy. Uh, very, uh, like I said, made it a point to talk to you. Uh, and I asked him a question about uh, Smallville, actually. I know I was there for Star Wars, but I'm also a Smallville fan. And I asked him, I was like, what was it like being on the Smallville show? And like, what was like your most, probably your most 
memorable memory from that show, and he talked about it, which was really cool. Uh, this is a story in itself, shopgoodwill.com, uh, which I don't know if you guys know about it, but it's another place that you can sometimes find some really good deals at. No, you didn't hear it from me. Uh, <laughs> but shopgoodwill.com had a booth there, and uh, this, this bag was $5.00. I started looking through, there was, there's a few good loose figures in there, but as I looked through, Darth Nihilus is in there, loose. And of course, he's, he's incomplete, doesn't have a saber, but I have an extra saber for him. So when I was looking through that and I saw the price of that, I was like, oh, I've got to get it right now. So I, I didn't even like question it. I just grabbed the bag and went up to the, to the counter and paid five bucks for it. So yeah, it came with all these figures in it, and yeah, I scored a really hard to find one in there, which I already have them complete loose, but I could turn around and probably sell him or get him, you know, sell him to a buddy who really wants him, but it just has a, had a reasonable price. So, uh, let's see, what haven't I covered? I think I've covered most of it, um, except for the triple zero. Uh, this was, the Bandai had a booth there, uh, a booth on the, uh, on the show floor, this was exclusive to Celebration from the Bandai booth. Uh, it's triple zero. It's Dr. Aphra's protocol droid in all black with the red eyes. Um, and this, like I said, was exclusive to their booth. So I had to go ahead and get it. Like, I just was like, man, this is awesome. I love the Bandai model kits. Uh, I have the Grievous one. I have the Fett one. I have the Phasma one. I have a couple other. I think I have a Stormtrooper. I have a couple other, but they're really awesome. Love these Bandai sets. I have a clone. That's what I have, a clone trooper, and that clone trooper is awesome. Anyway, I had to get the exclusive one, so I went ahead and got him. Uh, and then also, last but not least, uh, what I'd been wanting for so long and finally pulled the trigger on, and I made it a point to make this my first celebration to do this, I bought myself a Sideshow Collectible. <laughs> Return of the Jedi Luke, my favorite character in all of Star Wars, even like in the Legends and uh, and Canon. He's still my favorite character of all time. Um, and my favorite version of that character. <laughs> so you can display him in his uh, going to Jabba's palace suit. And the cool thing about this figure is you can display him as the final duel uh, in that suit with the belt on. And uh, you can also display him in the Biker Scout or the indoor biker scene uh, with the poncho on, like this version. Uh, it comes with the helmet and everything. Um, so yeah, this is an excellent figure. Uh, when I get a cool detail shelf like everybody else, I'm gonna display him as well. So um, that pretty much does it. Also, uh, random shout out to Jonathan, who I believe his name is Jonathan. I believe I have that correct. Uh, and at Smash Toys and Collectibles in Chicago, near, uh, or not too far from O'Hare Airport, Chicago O'Hare. Um, I'm working on a Finn custom right now, just from the Force Awakens, because the original Force Awakens Finn came with this head sculpt, which looks really strange, and it doesn't really even look all that much like, uh, his name escapes me right now. I know his name, because I saw him at Celebration in person, like a few feet from me. Um, anyway, so it doesn't even look like Finn very much, and, um, John Boyega, come on, man, <laughs> and the color of the jacket they gave him was like this Dijon mustard color, it's like really strange, not even close to the actual color of the jacket in the movie, so, uh, Jonathan at his store, uh, had this Poe from the two-pack, and I already have this Poe, I just didn't want to butcher the other one yet without having a second one to get for this custom, um, so I got it just for the color of the jacket and the jacket because it's more accurate to the actual color of the jacket in the movie. Uh, so I'm going to use the jacket and the arms for this custom. Uh, and yeah, shout out to him for his uh, awesome store. Very, pretty big, well, it's, it's kind of a smaller store, but it's got a lot in there. You can look for a long time, and he's very, very reasonable, very good guy. Like he, his business model, he, he, he just does honest business. Very good guy. Um, so I'd highly recommend him if you're ever in the Chicago area go check him out uh, But yeah, this custom I'm working on I got from the Finn officer disguise for sorter the head sculpt and of course I removed the arms to get this jacket on uh, And I've got the hands in there too, but <clears throat> anyway, so That's pretty much my haul 
from Star Wars Celebration Chicago. Had a great time with my dad and all my friends I got to meet for the first time. Because uh, I had already met Tim, Tim Connor 69 on Instagram. Uh, but I got to meet uh, Use the Force 81 for the first time. Jonathan, super great guy, super nice guy. Spent a lot of time in line in the Celebration Store <laughs> line talking to him and in line to get stuff signed from Sam Whitworth. He, we were in the same line. Uh, and then uh, Wes, SLC Geek. Super cool guy. Uh, me, Dad, Tim uh, all got to see the Episode 9 panel live. I won the lottery for that, which was so cool. Just an experience in itself. Uh, and, of course, Brecci, nice guy. Uh, Taboo, uh, Caleb, uh, super awesome guys. Got to meet them uh, again. I didn't get to see Chris, uh, the Collector's Hut, or uh, Isaac, uh, the Aggie Geek, this time. Uh, unfortunately, because we just had just different schedules uh, they were wanting to get stuff done which I understand totally um, and then oh yeah I got to see Austin and Erica uh, super awesome guys uh, let's see who else did I meet well of course our all Star Wars I couldn't forget Mike uh, Mike it was the first time meeting him in person I've done podcasts with him love that guy super awesome guys like a brother from another mother like my Hispanic bro <laughs> but super awesome guy so glad to meet him. And then also Star Wars Database, uh, another Caleb. Uh, awesome, awesome guys. Uh, and I met a couple of their friends too. Um, uh, I'm trying to remember their, <laughs> their names escape me. Uh, but I'm just so excited filming this video right now. It's so much stuff. But uh, anyway, yeah, it was a pleasure meeting everyone. Glad to have met everyone there, uh, if any of you watching. Uh, but, uh, oh yeah, I got two of the extra Vader and Luke because I'm going to use those as openers. Um, so, I had to. But, uh, anyway, so that's pretty much my haul. Oh yeah, and I forgot. The Episode 9 beanie. Like, we were waiting in line to get into the Episode 9 panel. And they were handing out these beanies and it was freezing cold out there. And uh, uh, on Sunday we had left uh, because we were there Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And Sunday we had to go back. But we were back and the, the Sunday that we were leaving... It had a snowstorm that had started, which our flights, my dad and I, our flights got delayed. So we actually had to spend the night in, in Atlanta Airport, uh, which was not fun. But uh, hey, it was, the whole trip was fun. It didn't, it didn't ruin anything at all. It was just, I guess it added to the experience. But very cool, JJ. Thank you, JJ Abrams, uh, for that. Appreciate it, bro. Um, but yeah, that's my haul. I had a great time. There's some pots and pans and stuff because this is in the kitchen because I literally had no room to display this anywhere else to try to film this video so I mean just a lot of stuff in here but anyway so yeah I'm gonna upload this to YouTube hopefully you guys watch um, anyway uh, I hope you enjoyed this video uh, maybe I'll catch you in Anaheim in 2020 who knows it's an expensive trip but we'll see so uh, may the force be with you guys